with us chickens, uh, as my mother used to say. Um, <laughs> today, uh, we're still in, we're still in John. Um, um, last week, uh, you, we talked about the conversation that Jesus had with the religious leaders who confronted him after uh, after and accused him actually of working uh, and causing the guy he healed to work <laughs> to work on the Sabbath. And in that conversation, he told them that he he was only doing what he had seen his father do. Uh, and uh, that that he wasn't he that uh, you know he could assure them in uh, five twenty nine uh, five chapter verse nineteen said then Jesus replied I assure you the son is not able to do anything on his own but only what he sees his father doing for whatever the father does the son also does these things in the same way uh, so he told them that, that, that you know he couldn't do anything he only was doing he was only doing what his father had had had, had was doing. And that, uh, as a matter of fact, the father he would see more. They would even see more greater things, uh, like uh, um, that they would be amazed about. And he said, just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, uh, so the son gives life to anyone he wants to. That's in uh, five verse, uh, chapter five, verse twenty-one. He said, and just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, so the son gives life to anyone he wants to. Then he said the father didn't judge anybody, but he had, but he had given him the authority actually to judge everybody. Uh, and then he told them that if if they believed in the father who had sent him, hi, how are you, pastors? I think inside. Oh, okay, okay. I think you're going to meet over there on that side. Okay, okay. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> thank you. Um, he said that anyone who heard and believed in him would have eternal life and not come under judgment uh, that that one day the sun will shout and everybody will be raised some to life eternal life and some to judgment uh, and then he told them as a matter of fact you guys um, uh, don't uh, um, don't take my word for it remember Said, don't take my word for it. Just me, <laughs> uh, because my just my word is not valid according to the according to the the law, which is what these guys were were all excited about. My word on loan is not valid, but I've got witnesses that that will uh, agree with me. One being John the Baptist, uh, the other being uh, his father, uh, the uh, third being the works that he did. And fourth being the scriptures, which they were so steeped in studying. And he said, as a matter of fact, I don't even accuse you. It's Moses who accuses you. You, you, uh, you know, Moses was that hero, you know, because Moses wrote the law. So it's Moses that, that, that accuses you because he wrote about me, because uh, he wrote about me. And with that statement that Moses accused you, he left. And that he ended chapter five. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we get, we get into chapter six this week, uh, and um, uh, kind of, kind of an introduction to what I, what I uh, was uh, when I started studying. It, it says, "Do you realize that during your lifetime you'll probably spend thirty-five thousand hours eating?" Uh, that's the equivalent of eight years of non-stop meals, 12 hours a day. The problem, of course, is that even after a big meal, we get hungry again. At best, food only satisfies us for a few hours. Now, in this chapter, that's kind of the introduction. There, but in this chapter, uh, it's the chapter where, where Jesus feeds the 5,000. Okay? Uh, and uh, the point is, after, and we'll talk about some of that, that after feeding those 5,000, he eventually had, a, had an opportunity to tell them that the, the, the food you ate when I uh, fed all of you guys only lasts a little while, and there's better food than this. That's kind of what we, what we get to in as we study this chapter. So let's start chapter 6, uh, and let's just read the first four verses right now, somebody. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him, 
because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was there. Okay, so this is apparently sometime after the conversation, the stuff in, that happened in Jerusalem, uh, when Jesus healed a paralyzed guy. Uh, and and uh, he evidently did a lot of other stuff because the crowds kept following him. Um, he's back from, he, he had gone, you remember he, he was in, kind of, kind of the way that the, the, he's gone, is, uh, in, as so far in the chapter, he started out in Capernaum where, where John the Baptist, in Galilee, where John the Baptist baptized him, he got the disciples, he went to Jerusalem, he went to the wedding, Right, he went to Jerusalem, tore the temple up, <laughs> went back to Galilee, uh, and he went through Samaria. That's where he met the woman at the well. And went, and then he went back to Jerusalem, because where he healed the paralyzed guy. Now he's left Jerusalem again, and he's back in Galilee. Okay. But when you say paralyzed guy, uh -huh. isn't in fact he? he because Jesus said, and said no more. Uh -huh. So when you say paralyzed, right. that doesn't encompass this whole well, mess. That well, it may or may not, right. Uh, and, and, and quite frankly, the, 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 uh, a sin may have caused this paralysis. We don't know any of that. You know, it, it, you know, it, the, the sin, <laughs> sin may have paralyzed, may have caused the paralysis, mm -hmm. but we don't really know. Uh, but, but, but more than that, I think Jesus was saying, just sin no more, period. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's possible. Let me ask you this. That a in, that time, a sin in five three, uh -huh. I don't. I want to know what this word means. Okay. It says, "Here a great number of disabled people used to lie: the blind, the lame, the paralyzed." When they say lie, do they mean prostrate or lie? No, no. I, I think they're talking about prostrate, okay. laying down. Right, right, okay. right, right. right. Uh, because they were all waiting now, right? I mean, they're waiting yeah. for they're waiting for the angel or the water to move. So you know, it could be a long time. So I guess they would would lay down. But no, that's what it means. Lay, <laughs> it means prostrate. Okay. So 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 uh, here's, here's what's interesting now that John mentions here uh, the the Jewish Passover celebration because in in this chapter Jesus is going to talk about uh, his uh, eating his body and about his body and the blood. And it's, it's what's really interesting about this is John never talks about the Lord's Supper in his in his uh, gospel. The others do, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke talk, talk about the Lord's Supper. John never talks about the Lord's Supper. A couple reasons, maybe. This was, his gospel was the last one written, and you know, and 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 the others had had written about this. So apparently, so maybe. He said, "Well, there's no sense in me writing about this again." Uh, and that wasn't, and 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 Jesus, uh, John's point about this wasn't necessarily so much to talk about facts as these other people were, but he was more his his gospel was more reflective. That want want you to know that this man who did all these things actually, the son of who said he was the son of God, was actually God. Uh, but anyway, that's interesting. He says, he says, and and uh, uh, and it was in, uh, it, it was in parenthesis. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover. Okay, so uh, so so uh, verse, let's read uh, verses five through nine. So we kind of know what's happening now. He's back in Galilee, uh, and these crowds have followed him, uh, and uh, he's sitting down on the hill. Five through nine. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, how would how would you characterize Phillips and and Andrew's response to that to uh, the problem of feeding this big crowd? And what he said. I was thinking, you know, they may have thought, hey, you must be joking, <laughs> you know, or, <coughs> Lord, you know, or, or, or Rabbi, that's a silly comment to make. Don't you see all these people out here? Mm -hmm. 
you know, how are we go going to feed them? Uh, 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 there's, there's a couple of things to, 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 to think about here, as, he, as John is written this thing. The closest town to these people was, uh, was Bethsaida, and it would have been tough in the evening for all of them to go anyway and get something to eat. And then, uh, uh, to kind of give you an idea of what, uh, uh, what Philip said uh, in terms of 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, a little calculation that I found in, in <laughs> when I was doing this, 200 denarii worth of bread, uh, the apostle estimated, would be hardly enough to feed all the people. Here's how Philip could have made his calculations that 200 denarii would not be enough. A denarius equaled about 20 cents. And that was the use, usual daily wage of a laborer. A laborer with an average sized family of five probably spent half his daily food income for food. Assuming the family ate three meals a day, <laughs> we can calculate, uh, we can conclude that half a denarius would have furnished them a day's food or 15 meals. That's three meals a day for five people. Okay? A whole denarius would have provided two days rations or 30 meals. Okay, then 200 denarii would have provided one meal for 6,000 people. Uh, now, according to Matthew uh, and John here later, there was, uh, the, was 5,000 men there. And some, some theologians have estimated the crowd could have been as large as 15,000. <laughs> so, 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 for for Jesus to say, "Hey guys, uh, where can we buy enough food so we can feed these people?" would have sounded, "Wow, that's nuts." Okay? Now maybe he was testing them, you know? maybe because they had seen all these miracles, you know, and you know maybe he was testing them to see if they would say, "Oh, we don't know, Lord, but uh, we know you can do it." But <laughs> they didn't. They didn't do that. So let's let's read uh, uh, verses ten through thirteen, Houston. And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. <clears throat> now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the load, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they were. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and then filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five body loads, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Okay, okay, so, so, all right, first of all, this is the only miracle that's mentioned in every one of the Gospels, this one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and now this. This is the only one that's mentioned in all four of them. Interesting is this, what's really interesting is this, that the miracle occurred in the distribution of the food. He only, he blessed the food, and he gave them the five fish, no, five loaves and fish. And as they passed it out, there was enough for everybody. Wow. He didn't, the, 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 at least according to the scripture, didn't say, okay, he blessed the food, and all of a sudden, there's all of this little bread and all of this fish. It, as they passed it out, they all, everybody had enough to eat, even all they wanted so that there was enough that they even took up leftovers and what and Jesus said gather it all up you mean okay if, if, if God blesses you don't waste none of it so okay, let's get this is blessing so let's get let's get let's gather it all up so how do you think how do you think the disciples would have felt as, as, as they picking that stuff up yep. yeah and all amazed and thinking, well, how, why, you know, how, how, why didn't we believe him? It's just, a, you know, uh, so, so uh, what, what that's kind of lets us know is that no matter how difficult the situation appears, okay, we can look to Christ or God to, to, 
to, to work work it out, work something out, no matter how difficult it appears. It appears there's more than 5,000 people that got fed from five loaves of bread and two fish. Okay, it's, it's in the cantata it says, Oh Lord, Lord, how Jesus did it, knock my sandals off of my feet. So, so that's the song <coughs> we sing in the cantata. So that's amazing. <coughs> So no, so so verses verses fourteen and fifteen say, then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, "This is the, the men of the crowd now." Okay, said, uh, "This is truly the prophet who is coming to the world." Therefore, Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force, and and uh, make him the king. Right. So he perceived that the, the, the people are amazed at this, and he's thinking, and that this and well, wow, this is gotta be. The prophet. <laughs> it's got to be the Messiah. And so Jesus left. He didn't want, it It was not the time for them to happen. So Jesus left. Now later on, in the, he, it went later on in uh, the synagogue in Capernaum, he's trying to explain more about who he was. Remember, he left them because he didn't want them to take him by force. So now he goes to the synagogue uh, later, later on, later on in the chapter, he's going to talk about more about who he was and why, and who, who he's, he's he's not he's a Messiah, but he's not come to do what it is you think I want to do. I'm going to do it in the way you want me to do it. That's later on. So uh, he leaves, okay, and he goes <laughs> he goes to the mountain by himself. They want him. They want. They want. They want him to make him the, the king or the Messiah or do whatever it is. But he perceives that and he leaves. So uh, verses sixteen through twenty-one. Uh, cookie. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake to the country. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were headed. Okay, so so the, the, the site he left, Jesus had gone. The, the disciples left, apparently expecting Jesus to, to, to join them in Capernaum, because they left. Uh, uh, but as they as they're going over there, and that's dark, uh, and they get they out they're out in the middle of the lake, and there's a storm. In uh, in 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 in, in uh, that part of the world, uh, because of the the weather, it's, it's desert. The, the, because of the weather and the coolness, storms often occur on that lake, and that severe storm, the lake on that night. So it's dark. They're gone, and uh, there's a storm, okay, and they go. They're trying to get to Capernaum. So in the middle of the, in, okay, couple of that. It's dark. There's a storm, and they, you look up and you see somebody coming toward you. So, so, so they think now that it's a ghost. It's dark. It's stormy. Here comes, here comes something across the sea. We're trying to get to Capernaum. Uh, rowing hard, and here comes this thing that they think is a ghost. Uh, and then when Jesus, but then when Jesus, when Jesus, when they, they recognize as Jesus, they calm down, uh, and he got into the boat with them. Now, now this is the same. This is the same occurrence where where uh, Matthew, in Matthew and Mark, um, uh, which is Jesus was walking on the water, and Matthew records Peter now doing. So this is the same instance. But Matthew says Peter gets out of the boat. Says if you if it's you, Lord, let me come. And he gets out and walks on the water for a while. <laughs> and then then uh, he, he realizes where he is. I'm out here on this water. <laughs> and, and, and he takes his out of and starts to sink. And Jesus saves him. What's amazing too, though, about this now? He walks on the water, right? But it says according to John, when he gets in the boat. They're out there wrong. Immediately, it goes to shore. So that's another miracle. Okay, immediate. They're they're out in the lake, uh, and immediately 
it goes to show, which is another example that shows that, that time and space are under the control of God, okay, of Jesus. You know, time and space are under Jesus' control. Um, so, so, um, 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 it's not surprising to us, to me anyway, that they would have thought, they would have freaked out when they saw a ghost. A ghost, right. right. You know, they're expecting Jesus to join them in Capernaum. They don't know how he's going to get there. <laughs> you know, maybe they think he's going to come by boat later. But they see this figure coming across, a person walking across the water. And and, and remember, those, those people really, they believed in, in appar apparitions. They believed in, in being able to see angels and spirits and all kinds of and And so they thought it was a ghost out there in the middle of the lake in, a, in the storm. So, uh, all right, so now, the next, but now they're, they're on the shore in Capernaum. So let's start at verse 22. Uh, you have to get start, just start reading. I'll stop you in a second. On the following day, when the chief of the was standing on the other side of the sea, he saw there was no other boat there except that one which was the size of a hand. And the Jews had not been before the Jews were the disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw the people who went there, Okay, okay, so, okay, the next day, the, the, the people come down. They knew the disciples were gone and left uh, in the boat without them. So they were waiting for him to come down from the hills. They didn't, you know, they saw it. They, they saw him go up to the mountains. The disciples gone. So they're there waiting for Jesus to come back, right? Then when he doesn't come back, they figured, okay, well, maybe he went to Capernaum because of the boats coming back. Come on. So let's go. So they went to Capernaum to find him. You know, he had, he had done this great miracle, fed all of these people. Uh, now they're looking for him. So they they want they want they that's this is the prophet. They want them. But but here's what Jesus when they found him. Jesus said that you've seen these great signs, but that's not why you came looking for me. You came looking for me because I fed you. Right? That's what he said. You came looking for me when I fed you. Uh, but he's putting but now let's let me let me try to change your mindset and he says then don't labor for the food which perishes but for the food but it that endures to eternal life now you know food is essential to our bodies we got to have food to eat uh, and remain alive and healthy uh, but we are more than just a physical body you know we have with spirit as well and so what Jesus is saying don't labor so many these people work hard this you know, just don't labor just for that but uh, uh, because the food because it's the food which is essential but it perishes what you need to work for is or things that are more lasting uh, just like us today you know uh, 
even though we have, have physical hunger today, um, and everybody does, people still feel, and we eat, people still feel an emptiness inside. I mean, if we, if we, if we, if we, if, if we admit that ourselves, and others do, that's why, that's why uh, uh, people uh, spend, all, spend all their lives trying to get possession. So we're trying to fill whatever that yeah, emptiness is. Right, fill that with, with, with stuff, material stuff, sex, drugs, work, church, uh, you know, just churchy stuff, uh, because there's something missing and we're trying to feel that. And, and, and that, quite frankly, that's, uh, God has put that desire in us mm -hmm. and, 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 and a desire for Him in us. We just got to figure out how to, how to, how, yeah, how to do that, how, how, to, how, to, how to, 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 to capture that, how to get to that. And, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit continues to urge us for that. But so, so what we got to finally realize is that this other stuff doesn't ever feel that void, never does. Never feels that void. Ever. That's right. Right. You go from, one, right, right, you go from one, one to the other yeah. to the other. And and when 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 somebody when we realize through somebody talking to us or witness, uh, or or us asking questions, too, we realize that that void can only be filled by God. We're going to continue to 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 uh, to do it. Uh, Water that you'll never, right. That you'll never thirst you, right, 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 right. Jesus is kind of he's talking the same thing. He talks, to, he, he he talked to the woman at the at the well about the water. You'll never, if you come to me, you'll never thirst again. So now he's starting to tell these people, hey, don't 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 just labor for the food uh, which perishes, uh, but let's start looking. Right, let's start looking at something that can can endure you, so that the food that which endures to everlasting life which I will give you because Jesus had put my seal on which it says I can do it. Now here's what they say. Okay? Then so their response is okay, what do we have to do? <laughs> right? Because remember now he's talking to Jews, right? And Jews at this time before Christ believe that the way to salvation it's not that these people are not religious looking for God. But they say, believe that the way to salvation was works. Let's, we got to obey the law. We got to obey the law. So Jesus, what do we got to do? Okay. What do we have to do? It says, uh, then they said to him, he said, don't labor for the food which perishes. That's verse 27. But the, for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. They said, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And then that's when Jesus answered, "It's got the, what, the work of God is that you believe in Him, and who He sent. That's what you got to do, <laughs> right?" Then they said, "Okay, fine. You said we got to believe in you. So now they say, okay, show us another sign. These are people in signs. Okay, let's let's. We want to make sure now, then, that you are the one. What they sign? Already saw <laughs> right, 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 right." What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do now? Uh, so, and and they may still they, they may they're still thinking about material stuff because what they say is okay. Um, let's see what what work you're going to do. Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said, "Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven." But my Father gives you the bread from heaven. That's Him, right? Uh, the true bread of heaven. Uh, so now again, He's now again He's putting this real close relationship between He and the Father. My Father, my Father, my Father. He keeps He's, he's saying this, saying them, saying that told the people that they should desire that that they should desire to find eternal life rather than the, the materials of the bread. Now the belief, the, and the Jews believed to get eternal life. They believed in it. They really did. They believed they could have eternal life, but they believed they could only have it by obeying works. the law. Works right, <laughs> obeying the law. We can never earn eternal life, and we know that now. Okay, today we can never earn eternal life because it's a gift. It's like God gave the gift of His Son, which He said that He sent. You know, the gift is He. 
You know, believe in the one he sent. That's me. Okay, so we got to believe in his son and have faith in him to have eternal life. Jesus, Jesus had told them God had sent him. He had told them, I have the authority to judge. Right? Uh, uh, and he had told them they'd had to believe to have eternal life. So he was telling them, hey guys, you know the scripture, you know about the Messiah. Here he is. And when the boy was there, response, okay, give us some proof. <laughs> right? What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe? He had seen all this other stuff. What sign now? Okay, then then then, then he's talking about man and death. So maybe, maybe they're asking again, okay, we want more stuff. Give us more food. More food. Uh uh. And so then Jesus said, okay, they said, that, oh, when they talked about the manna, here's... The manna spoiled. He had already told them, don't work for food that's spoiled. That's spoiled, right. right. The manna spoiled. Right. They, the next day, they, they stuff they didn't collect. More than they yep. kept more than they could eat in one day. Yep, it was the next, right. And that's what they yep. Them yep, except on the weekend, except on right, the Sabbath. Right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly. right. Because they couldn't work on the Sabbath, right. so you get enough. For the, okay, so, so, so here's what he said. They said, okay... The manna, here's the manna. Uh, uh, our fathers ate manna as it written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So what are you going to do? Then he said, uh, Gee, can you see okay today? Your eyes okay today? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, start, if you start reading at John 6, uh, verse 35. 35 through 40. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Okay, all right, so now he's saying some things that, that probably sounded a little strange and difficult for them to, to deal with. Uh, he said, okay, I am the bread of life, and he you come to me, you'll never, you'll never hunger, hunger or never thirst. Kind of, and he told a woman at the well that he was a living water, and if she drank from him, he would, she would never thirst. Now he's saying, I am also the bread of life. You look, you're talking about manna, okay, which manna gave you life in the desert. I in the desert, but I am the bread of life, uh, and but manna, like like uh, like Cookie said, manna uh, didn't last. Okay, if if you left any put to, any of it to the next day, except uh, the day before the Sabbath, it would spoil. You know, and you had to throw it out. So he said, okay, but so he said, now you you will never hunger if you come to me. Uh, and, uh, so. Um, um, but so so look to that not to the physical food. Then he says something that was, that's interesting. Then I said also another confirmation. Uh, I see it as another conf confirmation that, that salvation is uh, uh, forever and once saved, always saved. He says in verse thirty-seven, "All that the Father gives me will come to me, uh, and the one who comes to me, I will in by no means." cast out. So if you come to Jesus, he ain't going to cast you out, no matter what you do. Because remember what I said, I kind of, and this isn't original, but I read, it, that, that if, 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 if God gave me salvation, okay, and I accepted it, which is what I got to do, right, uh, then uh, he won't take it back. He's not an Indian giver, and since I didn't do it myself, I can't destroy it. I can't take it. I didn't. I did not save myself. There's nothing I can do to unsave <laughs> to unsave myself. Now I can. I can miss out on a lot of good stuff. 
<laughs> but I'm always, but I'm always saved. That's what Jesus said. If they come to me, I will know, I won't cast out. Uh, for I've come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. Uh, and that is so that uh, 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 that anyone who believes in me will have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Um, now, and that's that's that 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 is uh, that would seem strange if this was the first time you heard it. Yeah, yeah. but no casting out. There's only one way, and that's to uh, uh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Correct. Yeah. Now, does that mean you, you are uh, doing everything a Christian is supposed to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and you still got your uh, things you're holding on to that you, you know, haven't let go of. Mm -hmm. Just like with just about everybody. Right. And you know the Holy Spirit is telling you to let that go. Uh -huh. But you're still struggling with it right. and you don't let it go. Right. Is that blasphemy? No. Bla no. Blaspheming, blaspheming the Holy Spirit blaspheming the Holy Spirit is giving, giving the credit of what God does to Satan or somebody else. And if you're saved, you cannot do that. So once you're saved, you cannot ever you blaspheme struggle. the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right, right. You're going to struggle. You're you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Until <coughs> the day you die. Right, and that's what people talk about. Okay, have, I, have, I, have I committed the unforgivable sin? Well, that's it. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And if you're saved, you can't, you can't do that. Struggle yeah, you'll struggle. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But you cannot blaspheme. You cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, so Jesus said all that stuff. Hey, you know, don't worry about this this physical food. Uh, 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 believe in me. If you believe in me, uh, you won't hunger anymore, or you won't thirst anymore. And that was hard to understand. So uh, in verse chapter six, verse forty-one and forty-two. After he had said all this, it says, uh, then I'll read that. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said this, is this not Jesus, son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then he says, I have come down from heaven? So he said, I'm the bread of life. You eat this bread, you'll never be hungry, and you'll never thirst. Believe on the one who, and, and, and what he, the way that can happen is you got to believe on the one who, who uh, was sent from God, and now, here he is. I'm him. And then they say, but well, we have known this guy all of his life. How can he say that we know his mother and his father? Okay? How can he say I've come down from him? So they're complaining now. That's like, so So they know, well, first of all, they know too much about him. That's why it's, that's why it's, hard, that's why it's hard for us to witness to our families. And friends, because they know too much about us. They yeah. know who, who they know. They know <laughs> in, his own, in his own city. Yep, 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 yep. Because people know too much about it. They know your background. They know who you are. They know all you did. And they say, well, how can you tell me this? And how can you do that? I know what you wish you used to do. I know who you are. They forget about you know that you can be a changed person, but I know too much about you. So that's it's very it's very hard for us to witness to our friends and family. Now, uh, uh, if they took a, if they took a real critical look at you, they could would see how much you changed, uh, and that would cause somebody to think, well, okay, well maybe maybe there is something there, but people don't think that way. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yep, got right. That's, that's right. That's right. So that's right. So it's got to be somebody else. In most time, most in most uh, in most uh, most cases, because they were complaining, they knew, knew knew too much about him. They you know, some of them may have known him all his life. So now they complain. Who are you? You know, you're telling us you came from heaven. That God, you're the son of God. We know your mother and father. How can you? Hey, I don't, I don't believe that. So, so they, and they complained about it, and he heard it obviously. And then he said, uh, uh, "Read uh, forty-three through forty-seven, Gene, if you would." Jesus therefore answered and said to him, 
do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father sent, who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except me, who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Okay, but well, what are you saying? Okay, guys, don't, don't murmur. You can't come to me unless the Father draws you. That's kind of we talk about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit continues to draw to draw us. I, I guess he's saying I can understand what you're saying. <laughs> and, but nobody can come to me unless the Father draws me. And if you come to me, I'm going to raise you up in the last day. And and it's kind of it's kind of what I think he was saying. It says it's written in the prophet. They shall be all be taught by God. So he's saying, hey, okay, guys, nobody can can come to me unless the Holy Spirit draws you. So uh, they shall be taught by God. If anyone who's heard and learned from the Father, again, the Holy Spirit, now would come to him. So so don't murmur, don't murmur, guys. Uh, uh, nobody can come to me unless the Father has sent me. Uh, and so, and the one. It's like if, unless you're in a spiritual state of mind, you know, you can't, you know, you, you, you not see the whole picture. You know, right, that's right. According to your feelings and the, right. and the way the world sees it. Right, right. Okay, so, and then he said something that was really confusing to these people. Here's what he said <laughs> in verses, verses 48. I'll read it. So in verse 48, he said, okay, guys, don't murmur. Uh, you know, you, you, should, you should think about the bread, uh, the food, that, that where you'd be never hungry anymore, thirsty. Then he said this. And he had already told him, I'm the one sent, Father sent me, right? Then he said this. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness and are dead. Okay? So that, 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 from that miracle, that miracle of the manna, okay, didn't keep them, <laughs> didn't keep them alive. They're dead. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and they are dead. This is the bread that comes from heaven, that one may eat of it, talking about himself, and not die. Okay, the manna came and you died. This is the I am the bread of life. This bread, if you eat of it, not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh. Not now is really saying some stuff. That will make them think, wow, this, he's talking about cannibalism, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, am, and I am, and the bread I give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The, the, then the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to him, he knew what they were saying. <laughs> then Jesus said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate, not like the manna, okay, because they're dead. Uh, this is the bread which came down from heaven now that your fathers ate the manna and are dead he who eats this bread will live forever these things he had said he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum so he, he talked about them he talked about talked about them um, before don't 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 look for don't look for the stuff that 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 uh, perishes and he left uh, and then uh now he's in a synagogue and he's telling them. Now, what these words he said to them are very similar to the words he said at the Last Supper, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yep, yep. He said almost the same words at the Last Last Supper to his disciples. With now he's talking to a big crowd. The 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 with the Lord's Supper is a more intimate, is more intimate thing. Now remember, Jesus in his whole book so far used real stuff. To illustrate spiritual things, he's doing it again. You know, fruit and flesh and blood; those are real. But I'm talking about not physical things, 
but spiritual things because he's saying eternal life those you know those are spiritual things uh and and i look at it when he said he, he gave his flesh and he got you know his flesh but he is talking about when he sacrificed his life on the yep. cross yep so unless you accept him yep that, right you know, that's his flesh. and blood and right yep 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 Yep, and so and so Jesus. So, so some Christians think that they think Jesus was talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, which was talking about the Lord's Supper. He was not at this point. At, the, at this time, he was talking about now. He was talking about spiritual stuff. He was using. It was a figure of speech. You know? To understand what is meant. Right. By him. Right. So it was figure of speech showing him, showing he was the source of eternal life. In order to have eternal life, you got to consume me. Right. Okay, so just, so just as we eat and drink real food to sustain physical life, we got to receive Christ, right? Right, as the Lord is able to sustain spiritual life. He didn't mean we eat his physical flesh to have eternal life. That's cannibalism. You know, he meant we need to receive him into our spirits, right? So that's, that's what he was talking about. However, they didn't understand what he meant. The so verses 52 through 59 said the people did not understand what Jesus meant. He told them that, that they had to drink his blood. And these words upset them very much. Because Jews were, the law said, don't eat nothing with blood, blood in it. And here's Jesus saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood. So they were, they didn't understand what he meant. Uh, they would never eat me with any blood. The law didn't allow them. Because, because the law said the life of a person or an animal is in the blood. Uh, so, um, the next verses, in the next verses, because he, he said something that was really hard for them to understand. And we're going to finish with this. The next verses were these, uh, starting in verse uh, 60. Therefore, many of his disciples, now he's not talking about to twelve. Because remember, because of all the signs that he's done and all his miracles, there's a lot of people following him now. And they, 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 John calls them disciples. They're followers and they're learning, right? So, therefore, when, when, when after he made these statements about eating flesh and drinking blood, his flesh and his blood, and I'm the one that Jesus sent. Therefore, many of his disciples, when he heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? We don't understand when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? And I suspect some of them it did. He's talking about cannibalism. What then, he said, if this offends you, <laughs> right, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It's the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing, the words that I speak, and here's what he's telling, the words that I speak are spirit and life. But, there's some of you who don't believe uh, and who will betray him. Uh, but this, let's see, this word that speak of spirit in their life, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning that who they were that did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. And from that time, many of his disciples left and came and them back anymore. That was hard for them to 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 understand. They didn't believe him, right? But they didn't believe. The, uh, they saw the signs, right? But they did not believe him, and they left. And then uh, uh, Jesus asked them uh, promptly. With a, that question to, to prompted Jesus uh, to ask the twelve as to their attention. And intentions. Uh, he, he said, you know, he asked them if they wanted to leave, right? Uh, and then, so verse, what's, what's go, let's read the next couple of verses. 67 to 71. Then Jesus said to the twelve, the other people left, right? A lot of them. They didn't say all of them. A lot of other people left after he said. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Uh, also, we have come to believe and know you, know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? 
and he's talking about Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him. So he said, okay guys, do you want to leave now too? And Jesus said, where can we go? <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you have the words of eternal life. And that's similar to what he said later on, and this is a different time, but that's similar to what he said when Jesus asked the question, who do, who do people say that I am? And they gave him these questions. And he said, who do you say I am? And Peter again spoke up for, the, for them, for the, for the group, that you are the Son of God, the Messiah. And that's when he said, well, okay, this, this wasn't revealed to you, Peter, by, by man, but by the Holy Spirit, which is kind of what he said here too. Because he had said before, nobody can come to me unless the Father is drawing. And when he said, and he, then he said, uh, but he already knew who would betray him. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Judas had intentions to betray him when he first joined him, right? And that, that Jesus that, uh, that, that Jesus knew before, and Jesus did know beforehand who was going to put, going to betray him. But it doesn't mean that Judas Judas. When Judas joined, he believed. He went, Well, he believed that this is Messiah. This guy is going to deliver us from Rome. So, so uh, he he wasn't at that time trying to figure out to betray him. It wasn't like he was in the CIA and they planted him there. And they planted him there. He was convinced later that this guy is not who he says he is, because he's still believing the Messiah is going to going to overthrow him by military means. And so we need to get rid of this guy. Uh, because uh, he's not who we think he is. So let's let's pray. We got through. We got through this chapter. So with that's right. Yep, that's right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for this time. We ask, Lord God, that you bless our services today. Bless those that. Are